Welcome everybody to this fine Monday. So I'm starting recording this. Anyone who misses it, please watch the video. So please uh, go to the the working document, which I will put in the chat box here, so all of you know the D3D log and the working document in there, and that's May 1st. I did the first page there um, and hardly prepared because I was busy asleep. In. So here's um, an update. If you look at that video, let me share my screen so you see where I'm looking. I am sharing my screen and it's on it's uh, you can look at the document a little better here but hey people uh, event was amazing so um, first thing is thank you all for doing the videos when I got up that morning and I saw Jose do the put all the different instructions on a single page first of all it looks impressive and second you got a standing ovation from the crowd during the workshop as you can see if you haven't seen it the video in the bottom right hand corner which is right here uh, is taken during the workshop when I finished doing the walk through all the all the video instructionals and it was great I yeah I thought I thought it was pretty amazing I mean the product was really good people were amazed with when I when I saw it myself I I didn't know what was finished because I was busy preparing but I saw that and I was very pleased and so was the audience so you can take a look at that video later and the that's a shot from the build so 12 people ended up ended up signing up 11 made it to the event one got stuck on the road somewhere uh, 10 did the event because one person said this is just too much for me I'm going home <laughs> felt it was too complicated and then the people that were left built the printer so so the event didn't go as planned I mean it was actually much you know it sounds simple but it was much harder than than you think so the frames took much longer and everything else took much longer main points to take home um, frames yes we did the epoxy turned out a lot of people did not know how to mix epoxy and I ended up welding five frames because people didn't mix it f frames fell apart other five people were were good on the frame uh, but that's one learning second learning is um, we had our awesome instructionals we played them all it was raining that day so we ended up not bringing in the video screen into the workshop and that wasn't good like the next the next step for us will be to have TV screens in the workshop. It's it really, I really see how important that is because um, get a load of this. Most people, on average, I would say, have sh built the frames and the so after the frames, it's the axes. I would average out probably three times replacing or redoing the axis on average. So the event took. Uh, ended up taking twice as long. Uh, pe people who were there and could stay only the first day went home. One person finished, almost finished on the first day. All the other people took the remaining parts home, just some of the electronics primarily and everything, took it home. Uh, the people who stayed for the second day, it was great to see one by one the printers working, doing the little sample calibration cube. So that was really great. Uh, good news being that even with like totally unstraight axes like one guy just slapped the stuff on and we didn't pay attention where everything was and you can visibly see that it was slanted like by five centimeters on one side for um, I would say like five or three centimeters slant on one side of the axis and it's still perfect print because of the height calibration the automatic sensor which was pretty amazing um, but other than that we found okay the the video instructionals were absolutely awesome and once again thank you guys and uh, but there's still work to be done in the sense that uh, one person s ended up saying it's the the devils in the tiniest minute details and actually there is um, a bit of work to once again like I said we, we would go through um, one step at one time and then everyone would would do it but that in practice did not happen because one we did not have the TV screen in a workshop 
and second it kind of you know it kind of fell apart when uh, you know the frames didn't work um, you know people ended up taking stuff apart so so get a load of this I mean we had the D3D and the D3D mini as sample models like right in the middle of the with the workshop and I said okay the orientation of the axes matters like whether it's up or down with respect to the where the belt is held because that means the axis will move either one direction or the other um, but only let's see actually um, one out of the nine people or ten one out of the ten groups got that right on the first try so it was kind of for me it was kind of amazing it's it's you know it, it is a complex project of a build and you're flooded with instructions but at the end of the day I said okay no problem we've got the demo D3D sitting on a table just to replicate exactly how you see the axes with the motor orientation as well as the up and down of the axes and then the nine out of the ten did not do it right and it's like okay interesting very interesting and one person said basically well we're flooded with instructions you know we we need um, some little cheat sheet in front of us which which is uh, absolutely correct we we want to have video we want to have a cheat sheet we want to have the computer model for the person to work with so so definitely much more work to be done in terms of how people are prepared for the event and my impression was okay these things are simple enough and we've got the physical model even though we didn't have the TV screen I, I mean I said yeah we don't really need the TV screen because we've got the and we went over the videos and then we uh, you know I showed how everything is done but yeah it's um, you know it's it's complex because there's it's like I'm finding out that a human mind can only track so many details at one time before you just forget and one thing I will um, definitely encourage people for the next time will be take notes it's like if you're in school like if you're in school you don't end you don't go to school and go to a professor's class and just sit there without notes I mean notes is a religious part of any kind of education process and we are education so next time I will really really emphasize that do not come without a notepad where you can take copious notes because yeah we can have all the notes for you but just like you have a textbook uh, you don't just take the textbook and, and say okay I, now I can read it you take notes to take the most important points and that would be a definite improvement for next time so overall amazing I mean I was very happy to see how it went I mean I see great potential in terms of the, the efficiency of this event uh, so two days this time next time let's make it one day and not one day midnight but one day 6 p.m. or something like that you know so so no we didn't do it this time but um, I think overall everyone was extremely pleased very very good energy no I mean no mishaps like some people being pissed off or something like that or um, very good crew and um, got already one new developer this guy right here to sign up for the uh, the OSC development team so I'm gonna interview them and a couple more uh, this guy here and another one uh, this guy here that uh, are going to sign up for the development so it's a, it's a great thing great way to recruit these people are the guys that are the early adopters and builders and and the thing is uh, the challenge for the crew was all of us will work on calibrating this printer perfectly so we got some first prints but the quality is not the greatest because the, of course every single setting of how fast you're extruding and um, you know a lot of different settings come out to what a perfect print is because depending on the speed of the printer uh, the the nozzle speed in other words how fast you're extruding has to be perfectly matched pretty much pretty much perfectly matched like you know within percent of of the required speed and there's so many factors that go into that so we, we're gonna have to um, do a detailed calibration guide as one of the next steps so that's definitely forthcoming in the project so alright people uh, but very very uh, positive um, I'm really pleased and of course I'm a little tired from the weekend because first day I stayed in there till midnight and second day I stayed there till 7 or so so um, long weekend my voice is a little hoarse I actually will need a 
uh, I want to get an AV audio visual system in there where actually I, I'm on a mic so I don't have to scream to everybody to for the instructions and so forth so we'll improve the workshop workshop is excellent I mean look at that it looks pretty good here I mean it's kind of messy inside but it's a very nice working space we've got the big aisle in the mi middle we can probably do twice as many 3d printers in there and still be quite comfortable because as you see here like eight people bunched up on one table and there was a few scattered elsewhere but we can we can definitely do like 24 people in this area which is about 20 meters long or so um, yeah and it's 20 meter long by about five meter wide uh, aisle in the middle 16 feet wide um, that's where we're at but great stuff so let's move forward um, any questions you can go back to the question question thing I didn't do much on this agenda here because I didn't have time but there is still the, the process improvement assignments questions and the stand-up which I failed to do myself too okay let's uh, start looking at the numbers and uh, numbers are hours are good they're the the average is um, yeah, good good hours, but I, I know here from this this graph here, not everyone has filled out their timesheet, so please do that. There's six people that logged time, and I know there was a lot of good effort last week because the videos came out pretty good. As I said, um, I'm glad that they came to the level of completion that we did have, including the final assembly, which was pretty nice. And there was some, like one thing that stands out, like for example, the belt moving in, that was a little surprise there. Abe, thanks. Um, and little details uh, altogether look at the video for a review by the audience by the user audience and of course more detail just just some of this yeah we'll, we'll keep refining it but the point is hopefully everybody uh, on page three has um, okay page three does not reflect it but what we, what we should do is um, I don't know if we updated this in the last document but as we move from one doc one week to the next we should use the updated document if that that page is replicated so that we don't have to guess you know which which document has this for example this index where we're keeping track of all the product like who has uploaded the source files Caden Live and FreeCAD and video source files which I talked about last last time um, I only see two people who have claimed to have done that so I would encourage please uh, update it on, on this one um, uh, yeah, this latest document should be updated. Hopefully it's not being updated in the former week. But basically as soon as we finish one week's uh, agenda, this working team meeting, uh, that same Monday, which is today, what I will do is I, I set up the next week's, which is uh, just like I did that last time. I set up the May 1 event uh, meeting right after I... I uh, that Monday after the meeting so so please work, go to the D3D log go to the latest document that should be updated there and eventually we'll have a process manager who tracks this and does you know as I speak here they'll be preparing the May 1st um, the May 8th agenda and so forth so we get more and more uh, organized okay so with that said um, I'll, I'll save all the questions for later so feel free please uh, go slide 12 is the question slide so anything that sticks out regarding how the event went what the learnings are everything else uh, please put it in there and we have that as a later agenda item so I'm going to type in the document again uh, for people who joined okay a few more pictures on Facebook um, you know rod cutting and things like that I, I put this one in here this is this is what you get when you ask a, a team to cut you your rods there they'll be a little bit different now it doesn't really matter for us uh, so that's th those are all the same length there is no no difference in these really <laughs> no there is a difference but but they they work because we have a little bit of play on how long the rods can be because that means they might be in and out of the carriage only so far and all of them were correct lengths at the end of the day what you see here is the mini in progress and that's the the demo machine there you see people building the axes um, rods action so you see all the 3d printed pieces and axes coming together um, busy busy 
a lot of challenges on the two challenges we did face. It was about 40 Fahrenheit, a few like 5 or 10 uh, c Celsius. It was cold. There were definite issues like the super glue would take much longer to dry. Uh, that was actually an issue. We have to do a very specific procedure for how you attach the magnets to the uh, to the carriages because if it's cold like today, like yesterday, and, and people are attaching them one by one, it takes a long time, but there's a technique where you can you actually want to use a piece of metal to put them on and hold them with a piece of metal so, so you just let it go, don't have to hold it. Just little details all over the place about how you know how the build uh, should be made more effective. So let's quit out of that. And let's talk about what lies in the future for us. So I'm going to go to page two and talk about progress. Product release schedule um, and priorities for how we can divvy up the work for this week. I am suggesting that we do the next, so for the next workshop, I do want to do an experimental CNC torch table build. So that means one inch shafts, that means the much larger version of the machine, so basically the same 3D printed pieces except scaled up for one inch rods. That means they take longer to print, but um, we are ready with the CNC axis that we have right now to put on a torch head onto the machine and do the CNC torch table, which is critical in our tool chain in that that's what's used to build all the other machines by cutting out steel. So we're moving straight from this 3D printer, but we want to finish up some 3D printer stuff. If we want to print larger things, we want to do our filament maker. So um, what I will do is on the next page, so going over this, filament maker, we want to add that to the next workshop. I am thinking six weeks until the next workshop, so mid-June. Uh, so I would say for the next two weeks, work hard on getting the, the filament maker and also finishing up some of the 3D printer stuff. So there's, um, for the 3D, 3D printer, the one thing that we can do to extend the capacity and show the true nature of the, the 3D printer construction set is to take two 16-inch D3Ds, mount them vertically connected by angles using magnets. One magnet supporting between two pieces of steel has 20 pounds of pull force. Very serious. So we can simply take two D3Ds and use angle iron such as 2 inch by 1 eighth inch angle iron that's say 6 feet tall. And this is what I would plan on. 6 feet tall <clears throat> and you make a 6 foot tall D3D out of those. Basically the Z axis is greatly extended but the X, Y are the same. And that's a very easy uh, next step for us to do for the next workshop. I would say that uh, in the next workshop, um, I think we probably want to run, and I'll think about this a little more, we definitely want people to build their own D3Ds. We can maybe frame it as, okay, we teach you how to build a D3D, and here's we, we teach you how you would want to extend it if you want a very tall vertical printer. So we can definitely do something like that for the next workshop. So next iteration of the 3D printer. So um, filament winder, 3D printer, we can use right now what I would plan on is, so there's a grinder that's missing out of this whole operation because we need to grind plastic. So, so basically the idea is no more plastic trash. Everything we throw into the grinder and then we make pellets to make 3D printing filament. And uh, for next, next time around I think we can do do the filament maker, let's assume for now that we have regrind our pellets of plastic that we can use for that. So, so not too many things per iteration cycle here. So we can do the Lyman filament extruder, which is uh, the only working 3D printer filament extruding, extruding machine out there that I, that I know of, really. But it's a, it's a great one. It's, a, it's fully open source, so we definitely want to move forward with that and make it happen. And I think we can do that with uh, the open source plans and six weeks of development time. And for that we can say, okay, we do an experimental build of the, of the Lyman extruder unless we have enough energy within the team to actually make um, a couple of prototypes before the workshop and we can actually offer that as a, as a workshop 
um, possibility within the next workshop. So either experimental build or actually several of those made for different people. And once we get all these different machines, I mean, people were very interested in the plastic grinder, uh, the, sorry, the filament extruder and further iterations. The idea of the construction set really resonated with people. I'm really glad for that. So CNC torch table, continuing a 3D printer, extruder. Um, and that's, that's about it for the next time around. But that means there's a number of um, modules that we need to develop for this. Uh, the other thing I failed to mention is the print cluster. What I found is that, uh, so I've been using two, two Lulzbot minis to print all the materials. Now for the next time around, I want to use all our machines to print all the parts for the next workshop. And that means setting up a print cluster. So uh, we built a number of D3D large ones and two minis, but that means we've got all the parts left over from the 12 inch. Actually, we have 13 inch and 10 inch as well. So I've got all these parts enough for like 12 machines. I'm going to aim to to build a uh, cluster, at least six machines, where we can actually grind, you know, really knock out parts for the next iteration of the, the workshop. So that means uh, some infrastructure there. How do you network all those 3D printers to be controlled by one computer? And refining the process such that the maintenance is so minimal that a print cluster is, is feasible. It's not like, oh, you have to fix clogs or do this and that. I'm very confident about the bed leveling part that worked very sweet, but other elements like nozzle clogs or, you know, software messing up or like crashes, like we got to work all that out to make a, the open source print cluster. So that's basically it on that. So, so let me start this page. Let me start the next slide and start talking about, um, uh, actually work division, but let's, let's stick to the agenda. First, so let me um, let me go to the agenda. So it went through the product release schedule review of last week, uh, celebration. So the celebration is watch the video, um, watch the video on the front page here, and then uh, let's go to the progress updates, and then then go to the teamwork assignments, questions, and suggestions. So so let's let's go through team member progress updates uh, for anyone who, who wants to pipe in, because the idea here is. So we've got two, four, six, seven people on. Um, the idea is um, where we are on the 3D printer right now, the most important thing is page number three, where people actually upload all their source files. And I like it. Thank you for updating that here. But I'm going to go through that and I'm going to bother you if none of the, if some of the files are missing. So we definitely want to follow up on that. So I think we can focus the review session as far as where you are with the intended scripts. And uh, like, for example, Lashlo uh, part one here, I see three. I know you did more than that. Michael hasn't been so much involved, but Chaz, uh, Jean-Baptiste, Roberto's good, Abe, uh, Roberto, Frank, Cedric. Um, yeah, please update this definitely and see where we are but let me hear you all where you are who wants to go first and I'll be quiet for a second go ahead Abe uh, let's go okay I'm gonna p okay um, <coughs> Go ahead. Okay, who's going first? So we have uh, we have Cedric. Go ahead. Hello. Hello. Good job on the uh, on the uh, instructional. Hello. Hello. Yeah. Go ahead. No. Go ahead. Yes. Go ahead. Yes. Go ahead. Cedric. Yes, please go ahead, Cedric. Okay. Uh, if you see my, I have finished the, the video. Yeah. And I'm, I am, uh, I am the changing what you have to submit that to me to change the, uh, the, 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 the
Uh -huh. So I will finish it and will upload this part uh, this week, uh, tomorrow or next, the next day. Uh -huh. And the also I have also finished the middle of material of uh, the extruder. Okay. The, 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 the old extruder and also the, the extruder from Fusha uh, MK, MK2. Okay. It is not finished, but I, I am on it. Okay. For, for the 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 extruder of the bit of material of from Prussia. Okay. Not, uh, very good. Very well finished, but uh, the one from of the old it is finished. Excellent. Okay. Excellent. Yeah, I liked your videos. That was really good. Uh, the detailed breakdown of the Make MK8 extruder, and definitely for the next build. I don't want to go with the MK8s because they are limited in their performance. So we are going to build on your work, Cedric, uh, which is very important. So we basically were preparing this uh, the pr original Prusa i3 extruder, which then does rubber, polycarbonate, and everything else. And you can put the Volcano nozzle on it, which is 1.2 millimeters, to get a printing rate of 5 pounds per 24 hours. So we really look forward to that. And that is an important point, so we'll go into that next on the uh, roll division for uh, the next build. Thank you, Cedric. Okay. Uh, um, thank you. Next person. So, yeah, go ahead. So, uh, is, um, if I, I, I understand what you have said, uh, uh -huh. I will also, you want, okay. I will also edit another video for the yeah, ex exactly. That we definitely want the thirty-second videos. Um, the general review of those was that they're very, um, very informative. They look good. Um, yeah, and I, I like the little touches that some people do. They uh, make it look good and artistic. So, um, yeah, definitely will need that. And you, I know you already have the the written instructionals for that. And talking about um, kind of like the final product that we have for any machine. Naturally, it's the CAD, we've got the video, we've got the written instructionals, and then what we can do, once we have all those assets, then we can recruit for people who are focused on publishing and graphics, because the next thing after the complete instructionals are language agnostic instructionals, as well as cheat sheets, where that is really graphics territory. This is graphics art. Um, information architecture presentation design so that people have those cheat sheets for the workshop so we can uh, um, I think this team can continue on this but if uh, we can actually start recruiting more explicitly for the documenter role where people now make this stuff that we have even more understandable up to the very final point which I would consider the language agnostic instructionals like IKEA diagrams where you don't need to read any any words the graphics are clear enough so we're positioning ourselves well for that as the next step. Okay. okay. Thank you very much. Next person, Chaz. Chaz, please go ahead. Alright. Um, so just do my uh, scrum stand up. Yep. Alright, I'll just read it. Um, I printed out the animations in video. I still had trouble performing the animations without crashes on um, FreeCAD with FreeCAD on Ubuntu 16.04, but I pushed through. Um, part two is like the little isn't fully complete, but I just uploaded what I had. Some files and video below. Um, I upload the Axie motor side, final Kane Live uh, file, as well as um, the EPA, um, EPA Universal Axie motor side for part one and part two. And I did the final um, Axie motor side final video, and then I posted it on my YouTube. Excellent. Posted it on my YouTube channel and um, have it there. Excellent, excellent. Um, you have some... Um, I have to go through that. What do you think are your next steps here? Do you have next steps at this time? or? Some... Well, I published everything that I had. Mm -hmm. It's just so I'm with part two. Mm -hmm. um, I was a bit using the orientation on like, some of the parts. Yeah. And so I just like um, assembled it together what I imagined it would be. Mm -hmm. I could probably do more, a, fine, uh, a better final version of part two. Okay, 
Okay. I'll assess what we have at present and kind of identify the critical needs, and maybe I can point some of those out. But for after this this meeting, actually, we want to dole out moving straight forward on the new aspects of development, like the extruder and other things, and three and the uh, torch table. And then we'll be cleaning these up, and maybe as new people come on, maybe we can get get them oriented to help finishing up and other things. So we'll we'll allocate accordingly. Um, great. Um, thank you. Next person. Abe, go Hello, ahead. can you hear me? Yes, we can. Okay. Um, let's see, I think everything I have posted to my log is updated uh, on the files and to my YouTube channel as well. Uh, took me a while to get the free cat stuff sorted out. Mm -hmm. But um, in the end, um, you know, I, I got an acceptable animation there. I mean, I can see... I got some feedback from the FreeCAD forums, too, on your suggestion, uh, posting over there, and I can see a lot better ways to do that in the future, mm. but um, it, it takes a lot of, there's a bit of learning curve to some of the more refined animation, and of course, I guess if you're saying there's nuanced issues with uh, people handling, I don't know, maybe the belts and things in the shop, uh, probably hard to compete with uh, good video for the animations on some things, but the animation, it, it turned out okay. I had, um, you know, I, I think I had less bugs in FreeCAD once I learned to use that a little better, but it, uh, I had some, I don't know, I, I hadn't used Caden Live that much, but I got that edited okay. I think it, I didn't get my transitions to work quite right, but it still looked pretty good. Um, everything was pretty easy, and I think I have all the videos on YouTube and other clips as well. I'm trying to get a little better with my recordings. Um, I, I think it'd be helpful to do a lot more uh, free CAD uh, instructionals and so on, but I, I haven't picked up enough of that yet to thoroughly edit that kind of stuff yet. Yeah. So I think that um, I've got all the files and um, I think I'm up to date on everything on the logging and I think I've updated. The, the Google document as well now. Yeah. Uh, I followed all the instructions on that, so. Good job. Um, so, I'm catching up, yeah. I think, on some stuff on my log uh, as well. Maybe some of the HR stuff I might be behind on yet, but I'm uh, trying to get better habits on uh, logging and, and tracking hours and stuff. Excellent. Excellent. I looked at the, so yeah, you did do quite a good, the video is good with the belt moving in. I was kind of surprised to see that, but that's a good job. And um, yeah, yeah, really good. And I would say, uh, document some of the learnings from the pre-cat community about how to make that better. Um, yeah, yeah. But overall, I think quite good. Um, let's move on to the next person. Thank you, Abe. Hi, go ahead, Roberto. Okay, uh, well, um, I was working on Sirius Bed. Yep. Um, that came out pretty good. Uh, mm -hmm. The videos, uh, uh, I, I'd like to improve some parts of the video. Mm -hmm. Okay. You'd like to... Okay, go ahead. Yes, I'd like to, to know what, what, what's next, basically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Excellent, excellent. So, thank you for the report. Your videos were pretty good. Um, I think you did quite well. Thank you. So, next person, Lashlo. Yes, we can. Okay, so I uh, try to proceed with the second part of the script of the D3D Y axis uh, mm -hmm. anim assembly animation, but um, the extruded part animation was buggy and um, mm -hmm. it uh, caused my time. And I couldn't uh, 
allocate uh, 10 hours this week, uh, but next week maybe I will be able to uh, work more to have the average of 10 hours. Okay. Uh, so uh, this week was not as productive for me as I wanted, mm -hmm. but I could uh, create the FreeCAD file, which contains the second uh, script uh, part to move the stepper motor block together to the road. So the basic for the video creation is there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, uh, I plan to complete this video and uh, I uh, would like to uh, dive into the details of the Python of the FreeCAD, attempting to understand uh, how to debug the FreeCAD's Python and uh, get closer to the Python's uh, connection to FreeCAD with, with this uh, exploded part animation bug and understand how the FreeCAD and Python works together. And also there is a place of improvement mm -hmm. The Linux uh, image file because uh, th there are distributions which allow you to boot from a pen drive. Then you can install software and, and uh, save files, and everything remains there. So, most probably, it could be done with the OS e Linux as well. That uh, they could create a pen drive image which is installed once, then you can add softwares, and, and that software should remain, so I, I would like to spend time in the upcoming weeks with this topic as well. Uh, very valuable stuff, okay. Um, I like the direction, so at some point, and you might be the guy that starts it, we, we're going to have to look under the hood of Python and FreeCAD, because we know there's a lot of bugs in, in FreeCAD, and the FreeCAD community uh, has its own schedule for solving them so the more people that work on that the better that will be a good idea and especially when we document that because I, I haven't found any good documentation on how you actually dive into there is no manual here's how you program um, FreeCAD here's like detailed software architecture for FreeCAD that is sorely missing for a lot of open source software projects especially like Marlin like I'd love to ha also understand that for Marlin like right now the 3d printers work um, and that's great but if you want to change something, if we don't, don't understand something, we have to go actually into Marlin and modify it and so forth for other needs. Uh, what you're talking about, getting rid of the bugs in FreeCAD is going to be an excellent thing. The OSC Linux distribution, yes, but that's exactly what we're trying to do. We're trying to do a, a, a disk, a USB drive bootable version that you can run either off the, the drive for someone who doesn't want to install on their computer or someone who does want to install it fully. And But definitely the file saving ability has to be there. Uh, so you can look at what the current st status of OSC Linux is. Uh, Jay and Kent have been working on that, and you can connect to them, so include me on that. But yeah, yeah, definitely uh, good good directions. We definitely wouldn't uh, be wasting time uh, looking into those issues, because for me, I, I haven't been able to make the exploded part animations work on, on Ubuntu 16.04 with version 0.16, and I'm actually going to ask that question when we go to the questions for feedback on that, because... Uh, I definitely have problems with uh, 0.16, and let's get to that later. Thank you. Next person. Jose and Jonathan. Jose. About scripting FreeCAD. So scripting FreeCAD is available already. That's good news. Uh, Jose, anything more to say? Good job on the final instructionals. That was great. Thank you for putting all that up. That saved me a lot of time. Can you hear me now? Yes, we can. Ah, okay. Well, uh, I well, you see in the in the standoff, basically all the items with the links. Uh, and yeah, basically, I would like to talk about the, the struggles in the in the in the tasks because the tasks are there. So I had some problem with the with uh, integration of, of of the assembly uh, model because there were so many parts that it, it just uh, you can't spend the minutes in 
just uh, putting a new a new uh, set of parts. I work with the MOOCs uh, thing. So when I was working in the sub modules, sub assemblies that uh, uh, Emmanuel did, I ha I had to do the MOOCs uh, to put it in the assembly so that we can actually manipulate it uh, as entities. You know what I mean? No, I don't. Like MOOCs, what? Uh, there is a there is a in the assembly workbench there is a, 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 a an operation for uh, creating an object out of all the the objects. Okay, yeah, okay. Uh, and that's important because if you actually want to manipulate the the sub modules in the integration assembly, uh, then that's the best way to to do it. Otherwise, you have to move each part again to select each part. You know what I mean? So when yeah, it yeah, I do. Like, uh, and that also took some time. And, uh, so I also uh, I, I found a very good uh, opportunity with the with the text to voice. Yeah. It saves a lot of time, and uh, the approach I, I did to to get the uh, relatively fast uh, the video was yeah. using slides. So when I play the sound, uh, I then start passing the slides and synchronizing uh, with the with the with the pacing of the script. And that takes you uh, a lot. This saves you a lot of time from editing in in in, in Kaden Life. You can almost uh, get a, a perfect video just by uh, organizing slides and uh, even with slide with video and, and just passing them in the moment where uh, where you want it to synchronize with the text. And that's uh, that comes out of the the sound software more than the Caden Live side, you're saying? Yeah, you record the sound, the, the, you, you, you take your sound, doesn't matter if it's your voice or the software, but I worked a lot with slides, so what, what I, I got, uh, I played the, the sound, and while the sound is playing, I just uh, pass the slides, synchronizing with the with the sound, you know? Yeah. And it saves you a lot of time from uh, editing in, 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 in the video editor and seeing where to work things fit and stuff like that. You can almost get it uh, right from the, from just, Recording uh, this, the a presentation that the little presentation that you make can okay. be with images, can be videos. Okay, so that's a good practice. Yes. Okay, excellent. I'm looking at your log. I don't see anything. It's called Slice. Uh, no, no, no. Uh, What's I, it called? My log is uh, it's in the stand up. Uh, right. We are good. So text I to voice. Mean, okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Good. So, um, and then, uh, yeah, and then the, 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 the question was what, what to do next, uh, basically. Okay, uh, good stuff. Okay, so uh, I looked at your log, you tricked me because you put it into the stand-up, which is right, that's what we said we were going to do, but uh, what, what do you think about adding the actual link to your log, which I'm doing right now here, if you're... Uh, um, you look at my screen I'm going to your log and I'm gonna say um, April 28 2017 and I'm gonna say, put that link to, to the stand-up oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah so you record there you're not duplicating but it's still logged so you can someone can track you off the wiki that's awesome no I like it that's good um, good stuff so let's talk let's go to the next person and see what what else we got Jonathan you want to pipe in a couple of uh, messages of inspiration yeah, I was just, uh, you know, ch catching up and seeing how the progress was going. Um, mm -hmm. Just wanted to, you know, touch base and also uh, acclimate to some of the new changes and figure out how the workshop went. Mm -hmm. and, uh, that was some of the main, yeah. main interest and in, uh, see how everyone's working together. Yeah. And uh, it seems like there's been a lot of great progress. So it seems um, you had I seen the pictures on Facebook, so that looked uh, looked, looked great. Uh, you said the printer turned out really well. Yeah, yeah, it was a great experience. There's a guy, um, there's a guy or two that are one or two hours south of Dallas, uh, but uh, there were actually two people from Texas that got the machine working. The guys from Dallas, I mean, Houston is what, like, how many hours from Dallas? Four hours. 
It's about four hours. Okay, so these guys are probably like three hours from you. They said they were like south of Dallas. Uh, so they built one, poss possibly uh, network with them. But yeah, um, good stuff altogether. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, definitely a lot of work to do. And yeah, but progress is very steady and visible here. So let's get back to... I think we've got everybody caught up right now. See anyone else? Um, I think I think we're good for now for where we are. So, let's see. Okay, so let's go to the. Let's discuss a little bit about the the next steps, which are specific items that that we want to get onto for for the next iteration. So some 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 things about documentation. So I'm, so please go to slide number three. Uh, which I just typed in on slide three let's let's take a look at so some documentation tasks we definitely want to do them but things like a, the OSC FreeCAD manual for how we do it how we hack it what are the particular things useful to OSC for our workflows documenting that would be great and maybe um, you know what here the the thing we can do right now is start a start a Google Doc Google presentation where we start doing an index of all the topics that are really pressing and, and most important to us uh, that would be one thing to do as well as the what what it comes out from this workshop what, I, what I'm seeing is everybody has to come to the workshop with this like 50 or 100 page even like 200 page super detailed manual where instead of me saying you know you know, I repeat things a lot of times, but I could say, oh yeah, that's page 55 in a manual. Take a look at exactly how that's done. And, you know, I liberate myself from five minutes of time, etc. So, so the, the workshop build manual is act a big action item. And that, that's where the language agnostics instructionals are going to come into. So as I mentioned, we want to start recruiting for uh, graphics people. Like Jean, I know Jean-Baptiste is a graphics guy. I know Jose, you do graphics, so, uh, but we, maybe we don't want to pull you off onto that yet because that would be, uh, I think we should just get more people to the team and that those people can actually build completely upon our work without the core team who's more familiar with this stuff, uh, you know, without disrupting the, the forward motion. So we want to build the team with tasks that are easy now to allocate because we have the underlying assets that allow other people to build upon them. And that's that's how we should think about it. It's always about increasing the team while maintaining its manageability. And you can maintain manageability by people pretty, pretty much filling upon, building upon the work that's already there, seeded for them, and they have to take it to the next step, like language agnostic instructionals. We can't talk about language agnostic instructionals before having done the written instructions or perhaps the videos. So, so that even the videos, uh, maybe they're maybe we we end up that the videos are not so important as as important in the actual build as the language agnostic instructionals now the answer is probably going to be both but the videos for, will be a quick way to train the people that are graphics artists coming up to speed on this whole thing so that's why we want to be pretty rigorous on how well we document with very high quality very tight instructional material so that's just a little aside on that but let's go let's go to the very specific tasks so Lyman extruder. Uh, well, Prusa extruder. Uh, that needs to be finalized. So, and I believe uh, Cedric is well on that. So, the Prusa i3 MK, Prusa i3 original extruder, the high performance one that now we can use. Only thing I don't like about that extruder is that it runs on 1.75 millimeter wire uh, printing filament. I, I have a feeling that we're going to go much more to the 3 millimeter because the, of the size of the things we want to print. So I, I personally like 3 millimeter more. I've used it on the Lowe's Minis quite a bit. And you just, you know, it's easier to make. It's, you have to make less length of it if you're extruding it yourself. And it's easier because um, it's easier to get the precision because it's you have to be tighter on 1.75 than on 3 millimeter mil, um, filament when you're actually producing it. So... I would like to go to three millimeter as much as possible, especially when we go to our garbage grinder that takes all our plastics and possibly does this plastic, this this kind of like bulk printing filament, which is a mix of all plastics, and you need a very large nozzle to squeeze it through because it might have rat hairs in it and whatever. Uh, it'll uh -huh. be like 
your and those rat hairs will be good for fiber reinforcement of your plastic lumber anyway so that's good um, but we want to get like this I, I think the bigger filament is definitely good the Prusa i3 does not have that and we want to start thinking about that for the future but for now the next step is to get to the high performance uh, other plastics like rubber polycarbonate and other things nylon uh, for example we want to print nylon slash rubber composites for tracks tracks per tractor stuff like that okay Cedric is uh, on top of that okay so that's extruder now Lyman Lyman extruder so filament maker Lyman filament maker uh, for that we can actually divvy divvy up the work there but the idea there is to pull together a CAD model so uh, I know I don't see any CAD models outside of the actual 3d printed parts but what we want to do is full CAD model um, so let's talk about full CAD for that in free CAD. But to do that, once again, we want to divide and conquer. So let's look at the different modules of the filament extruder. What, what is this education thing? Sorry, correct me, people, if I'm um, if I'm typing wrong. So you've got the drive motor as a module. You've got Yeah, people, uh, participate in this document if you can help me out on the typing there. Second part would be the heater, heater element, which melts the plastic. Um, heater element with, I would say that's one, the auger part, the, like the auger mechanical. So you got an, so for a filament maker, you're melting plastic and you're extruding it through a nozzle that makes your filament. So we've got all these parts here. You've got the auger mechanism. Uh, you've got the filament winder. Because after you make the filament, you want to wind it on a spool. So filament winder. And you also have the electronics. That's kind of like the, some of the main parts. But each of them are, uh, we can divide and conquer. So the drive system is one thing. Up to, up to the screw. How do you connect it up to the screw so the screw is the limit and then the, the auger mechanism or the screw um, that's that's kinda like the main mechanical part heater element like the whole heating assembly it's a barrel with heater elements with heaters and that will connect up to the electronics to to regulate the heat how much heat you're getting electronics will run the motor speed plus the heater uh, heat amount how much you're heating it those are the main parts but as far as the full CAD uh, if you break it down into the main main items there I would I would break it break it down like uh, main parts are uh, okay winder let me let me put checks for the like when we talk about doing CAD you want to do uh, divide it in a manageable way. I think one way to, to divide it would be uh, let me put paste in this here filament winder would be one CAD piece electronics I mean we haven't really been doing CAD of the electronics though that's a module so I'm gonna check mark like the CAD will the check marks on a CAD means there's like a specific CAD file there um, get that back um, the drive motor definitely like the drive system um, filament winder I mean the heater elements with the auger mechanism I think we can divide those into I think they kind of go together so maybe maybe put a check mark by one to show that the heater barrel and everything else kind of is one file there so there's those three main that are, I would say, CAD files, like the drive motor, um, heater element barrel with heaters. Let's, let's put auger plus hopper. And this is like, when we go along, we're going to refine this. Like, what, how exactly do we want to break it up? I haven't done so much of this, but that's, this is what, um, what I'm thinking right now. Uh, and maybe we could divide that into uh, people, different people. Okay, but next thing, CNC torch table. So CNC torch, I'm, what I'm going to do, it's going to be exciting. So we're going to go for oxyhydrogen. And this is, this is like, oh man, that's going to get a lot of people excited. So you're talking about fuel from water. 
So CNC torch. Uh, one is the oxyhydrogen generation module. For that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to invite the world's expert on hydrogen to, next, to the next meeting, and we're going to have a 50-minute session, 50-minute education session uh, in next next meeting with Walt Pyle, uh, who is uh, one of the leaders. Uh, he, he's uh, He's got like a hydrogen barbecue. He runs some of his energy off the off the hydrogen that he generates off solar so we would want to do that um, for off-grid operation and remote locations you can do off-grid oxy hydrogen uh, but that's we're going to educate people on it but for that look at um, if you want to this is kind of like more educational stuff that you can kind of look at it's very interesting but we're going to have the guy come into that but one what i'd like to do is uh i'll allocate one person on a team to kind of like stewarding that project so uh, there's a whole hydrogen generation uh, system and I'm not gonna say storage for now because here for oxy hydrogen cutting you can do common duct meaning the two gases mixed together when they come out of the electrolyzer you can do that um, so I'm gonna put that as one item then but maybe um, Maybe we can have one person do that. So I'm, I'm still listing all the things that we want to get into. Uh, and I'm going to send you a link to, to that. So if you go to the wiki, there's the, it's called the Solar Hydrogen Chronicles. It's a book, like a 100-page book. You can download it. Um, let me see if I can find it on the wiki. Solar Hydrogen Chronicles. Uh, let's see, Walt Pyle on the wiki. It, it's hionseller.com. So, I'm going to put that link into the Walt Pot by Walt Pyle. He wrote a book, it's a 100 page book or so, that, that explains his experiments in solar hydrogen. And I read that thing, man, this was like two decades ago. I first got my hands on that, and I was like, wow, um, really exciting. Now we've got him as one of the advisors for Open Building Institute after a decade or two. It's great. He's a world leader on that. Uh, we can learn from him. I'm going to invite him to the next meeting, so be there. Um, main thing there is, so the concept is you separate into water into oxy, hydro, oxygen and hydrogen, and that you can run. It's a very, very clean, high-performance uh, torching gas. In fact, hist history has it that uh, oxy hydrogen was more popular than oxyacetylene in the early days of torch cutting because they didn't have acetylene and, and it was easier to split water than to generate to, cre to get uh, acetylene. Um, but definitely doable. We'll see if we can do it if it's practical within the next um, uh, six weeks. It should be because if it's open source then we can just build it. Just get the instructionals and then build it. So we'll see if, who, who we can allocate to that. Okay, next item is the uh, scalable CNC controller which Chaz was starting to work on. Um, scalable CNC controller. Uh, so the idea there was the we can use the same ramps but add external stepper drivers to drive any stepper size motors motors of any stepper stepper motors of any size as well as adding external solenoid to, to drive heater elements of any size. So external power elements uh, upon ramps. And ramps is good, it's all accessible, easy to get. Um, all of that. So scalable CNC controller, that's another task. Um, and the ultrasound sensor. So we will have to do a torch height control on the CNC torch. It would be nice if we can use the same one as on a, on a printer, but unfortunately the thing on a torch table is that you've got heat, flames, smoke, heat, so you can't put the sensor next to the nozzle. It'll burn it. So we want to do the industry standard for the highest performance version of that is ultrasound. Um, height controller and I believe that can get you that's a single controller that can detect it you can also do inductive or capacitive you can do capacitive or inductive capacitive sensors are also used sometimes and they they can do a decent job but they're not as as accurate as the ultrasound so we're gonna go for ultrasound see if we can do it if not, we might have to go down to the, the capacitive height controller, which a lot of people use. But the, and I talked to the, the guys who make the ultrasound, and they say, yeah, that's like the next generation after the, the capacitive sensors. And ultrasound is, 
Um, we'll see if we can make it work. We'd have to identify a sensor that works. There are very cheap ultrasound sensors you can get like from SparkFun, but they might not have the resolution. You can try averaging uh, the results so you can get accurate readings. Now uh, we can try different routes. Uh, that's about all the things I, I would say for um, the main things to develop next time. And of course the tall D3D, but we don't have to worry about that yet uh, because uh, the six foot tall D3D, uh, you know, we want to draw up a CAD file for that and so forth. So basically stacking two, two D3Ds on top of each other with connecting uh, metal angles and extending the length of the the Z axis and so forth. But that's not, uh, that's relatively easy. We can get to that later. But the first steps to that um, are the universal well we probably don't even need the universal height control on that one bec sorry the scalable CN the scalable CNC controller because we can probably use ramps for the six six foot tall D3D as long as the axes are still relatively small I think we can still drive two now we would use two stepper motors for the Z drive um, but I think ramps could still handle that so let's not worry too much on that um, I'm gonna put a that's a that's an item to look at later, but I'm going to strike that through for now. Um, so let's talk about with these tasks. Um, definitely, the Lyman filament extruder is a big one. We've got finishing up of all the um, all the finishing work here. Uh, yeah, the documentation hit on me there. Uh huh. So documentation tasks for later. So there's so this stuff is new. up there. This is the new stuff. There's a mixture of now doing some finishing. Because obviously people are working on all the different topics and people said they're interested in continuing some of that. And then, so so put your names next to these. What do you guys want to do? Uh, who wants to do so? Cedric, we we kind of know he's already doing the extru the next extruder, the Lyman extruder. Who wants to get into that? Can, can you guys now, you know, put your names next to these? What are what are people thinking? Or maybe let's uh, open up a discussion. If anything strikes people as interesting, uh, let me know. What do you guys think? Lashlo, do you want to do finishing work or get new stuff? Okay, Jose wants to do the filament stuff, filament extruder. Um, full CAD by Jose. So, Jose, you want to do the full CAD or you want to take the individual parts, starting by individual parts? Because definitely before, okay, uh, definitely before we get into those parts of the full CAD, we need to generate the parts. So, there's a workflow there. Um, but what we can do is maybe start a, a document the good thing to do would be once again to start like an index document where where that's constantly updated we did that for d3d and we we came up with an initial breakdown of the machine into parts and that worked reasonably well we want to do possibly even better this time where we keep updating that as we kind of refine the roles on that so basically cloud updatable documents the google docs we can do that in there but i i think what we can do is uh start a page here uh where we start I'll take a look at that more and then start looking at how we can uh, divide those tasks tasks more easily. But I would say, Jose, if you don't know, uh, let's let's say uh, there are 3D print what we know about the filament extruder, the Lyman filament extruder, and for that, the link is in the video on page four. That YouTube video has a link to the source files and naturally there's going to be a Lyman extruder page on the wiki so if you look at that you can see all the files that exist for the Lyman filament extruder so so there it is um, there's an article it's an 83 year old guy developed this through a through a design contest and it's open source and the links are there the thingiverse we want version 6 
It's on Thingiverse. You can download the BOM plus the files of the 3D printed parts. And there is also yeah. a document that shows the build, but we're going to have to basically put that all together and go from where, where he is to a very high quality build document. Because I don't think he has any full CAD. Um, he has individual print files. So we can start looking at this, this link right here. Um, under the links section under lime and filament extruder on the wiki so let me put a link to that right there and uh, so forth so I see only potentially Jose piping in there uh, people if you're doing finishing work let's put it uh, please put it down in the finishing section so Let's call on you people. Abe, are you doing finishing work or new stuff? Chaz, are you doing finishing work or new stuff? Lashto is doing finishing work. Yes, we can. Well, um, let's see, I'm not sure I know exactly what kind of finishing work there is to be done. Mm -hmm. I guess on the on the D3D, and I guess the, the new the new uh, prototype that's next is is mainly the extruder. Is yeah, right? yeah, extruder plus the CNC torch table. And I'm going to be working on the CNC <laughs> torch table to divvy that up. Um, but yeah, there's definitely background work, and we're going to get some education on the torch table and stuff. I can prepare some documents. But yeah, yeah, there's uh, different things. I mean, if I, nothing stands out, we can, we can, I mean, I do, the with the filament extruder, we can definitely start putting together a CAD file, and maybe we can, uh, what I'd like to do there is get, like, like every, you know, uh, just like we were working on D3D, we kind of lost track of the overall file. It's, I don't know, it's... I feel like we can do a little better on coordinating the updates because I know we went through a lot of updates. Sometimes there were some instances where uh, it wasn't clear which was the update. Uh, we want to keep refining that process, but what we could do here is do a you know start a, a CAD once again. Go to the the 3D printer page on the OSC network, and and as soon as someone starts the file, people can add to it but it's easier to to start with the mo different modules by breaking things down uh, so it's like on the filament extruder the main thing is there's the extruder there's the winder like there's definitely two major parts so right now we can say okay two people like right now uh, we and then we can talk about break that down you know let's keep breaking that down because there's a lot of different further elements there um, does that answer anything Okay, we haven't. Is, is there more yeah. details about what we need to finish on the uh, printer? Yeah. So what I think. Uh, okay. Uh, so possibly the best, since we're getting into a little, little block here and lack of direction or lack of uh, clarity here, what I want to do is probably I'll look at all the files. Like so. So page number five right now has got all the different finishing states. And there might be some things that are really pressing that we really need to do now, but otherwise we can, so we can allocate some people to the finishing part, like for example with, um, you know, Chaz was talking about finishing stuff, or or I think Lashlow, Roberto maybe, or uh, some other people. But we can, I can pick out some of the critical things that we definitely need to finish up, because that's like definitely clear and visible gap. And other things we can let go as we get new people on, and as we, you know, through the next six weeks, we prepare for the build and kind of the roles and needs become more clear. Um, and, and we are getting more people joining the team, so um, we can divvy that up more. But, but maybe the best thing to do right now is for me to assess the, the exact state and provide a follow-up email with a more, more clear 
vision for what how we can divide this if people are not jumping up at the rolls already um, that are up here so we, we got Cedric and Lashlo occupied definitely with very clear things on follow-up there's a few things that I think we can divvy up and make more clear so maybe maybe uh, if you guys you know maybe think about it look at those links and uh, look at the prior work that we have documented already see if we can make any sense but otherwise let's go let's continue with the meeting as far as the agenda itself which is the questions and then um, uh, suggestions so we're kind of stuck on the teamwork assignments a little bit but let's go to the, the questions part so a few questions so thinking so questions and then we'll go back to to this and maybe we just end up with a follow-up email so questions thinking of doing a kickstart to replicate the micro house from OBI and in documenting the project, do you have any advice on the process of building the CD co home and running a successful Kickstarter? Uh, this Chaz, the first answer to that is the detailed build manual that is forthcoming, I think, like this week. Uh, Katarina is going to publish that first version. If you're a developer, we can get your hands on it. So the first step would be to get much more familiar with the technology itself to understand that, and we can talk about the Kickstarter later. Uh, that, that would be my answer right now. Don't have the bandwidth to walk you through all the Kickstarter right now. We definitely do have bandwidth for uh, passing on the, the complete build guide. And maybe, uh, you know, part of the things, Chaz, for a successful Kickstarter, I would, I would suggest is that there's, of course, gaps in what's missing for here's the next version of the CD Eco Home. So maybe a great, you know, great Kickstarter would be, okay, here's the next step we've got on a CD Eco Home. Uh, and we're going to support you so we can kind of collaborate with OSE and so forth as you are and we can talk about that but that's that's uh, there's definitely missing pieces and things that we're getting clarity on as we prepare for the next build but also the thing is uh, we're going to work full time on that uh, so the build is going to be in November so so the time to where we really really kick in on it would